When it comes to vectors in 3D space, the dot product is often seen going hand in hand with another similar operation, and that is the cross product. Simply put, the cross product is used for finding a vector that is perpendicular to two other vectors in space. When it comes to making video games, the main reason that one would usually want to do this is because they want to be able to find the surface normal of a triangle or maybe of some other shape. The calculation for the cross product is a little bit more mathy than the calculation for the dot product. In math teacher notation, the cross product looks like this. If you want to convert that into something that you can more easily type into a computer programming language, it's going to look more like this. Again, in the world of math and physics, there are a few different things you might want to use this for, but when it comes to games, you're probably most often going to need it when you want to calculate the normal of a triangle. For practical purposes, it is probably important to note that while Game Maker Studio 2 has built-in functions to calculate the dot product, it does not have built-in functions to calculate the cross product, at least at the time of my recording this. And consequently, if you want to calculate such a thing, you're going to have to implement it yourself. If you're using a computer language that is not GML, this is not necessarily true. You may want to consult with your local math librarian, also known as your language's documentation, to figure out if your language's standard math library has such a thing built in. In contrast to the dot product, which is also sometimes known as the scalar product of two vectors, the cross product will return a vector itself rather than a single number. Hence why the dot product is sometimes called the scalar product, and the cross product is sometimes called the vector product. One returns a scalar, the other returns a vector. Another consequence of this, and you may notice this if you look carefully at the mathematical definition of the cross product, the cross product is a function which is not commutative. If you have, for example, two vectors, let's call them a and b, and you take the dot product of a against b, and you compare that to the dot product of b against a, you're going to find that the result of the two calculations is exactly the same. In the land of the cross product, on the other hand, if you were to calculate a cross b, and then compare that to the result of b cross a, you would find that the results of those two functions are not the same. And furthermore, you may notice that the two vectors are pointing in equal and opposite directions. So one might also say that if you really want to impress that girl who sits behind you in math class, you might try telling her that the cross product is, in fact, anti-commutative. By the way, have I ever mentioned that I'm still single? Where were we? So considering that the cross product will return a vector that is perpendicular to two other vectors in 3D space, one might wonder what happens if you try to take the cross product of two vectors that are the same. And the answer to that, simply put, is that it's impossible, and if you attempt to do it, the universe will explode, so don't even think about it. Just kidding, if you put two vectors that are the same into the cross product function and try to work through it by hand, you'll start to notice that a bunch of terms are going to be canceling out, and anticlimactically, the end result is just going to be a zero vector. I guess if you try to normalize a zero vector, you're going to find yourself with some problems that you didn't have when you started, so try to not not do that, but other than that, there's nothing really special about it. It's just a zero vector. Also, by extension, this is true of any two vectors that have the same orientation in space, regardless of whether or not they actually have the same magnitude or not. Not only does the result of the cross product depend on the actual orientation of two vectors in space, unlike the dot product, it also depends on the handedness of the coordinate system that you're using. I am not going to attempt to dig down deep into the handedness of coordinate systems today, because between you and me, I don't really want my brain to catch fire and explode before I attempt to tackle the subject of quaternions later. And honestly, in general, the handedness of your coordinate coordinate system shouldn't matter too too much as long as you assume that everything in your code is going to be either entirely left-handed or entirely right-handed. God damn it, why do we even have standards? And lastly, while the dot product is defined for two vectors of any size, be that a scalar, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, four, five potato, six potato, seven potato, or more, the cross product only really works for vectors that are either three-dimensional or, of all things, seven-dimensional. So for all of you who want to make 4D, 5D, 6D, or 8D games, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to sit out on this one. That's gonna do it for me for today. Thank you all for dropping by. I normally try to make videos on the more tangible parts of game development, but you know what? Sometimes I just feel the need to open my mouth and let a bunch of math words fall out of it. And apparently when I just do unscripted videos by the seat of my pants, people seem to think they're funny for some reason. You all are a bunch of weirdos. I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Gunnar Clovis, Posho, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, Head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.